with our angles. Uh, first of all, we got to get our bell work problem out of the way, and we're still reviewing those equations, and we'll eventually move on to something new, but right now we're keeping this going. So remember, we're going to use the distributive property first to get rid of the parentheses. So we'll do 3 times r, which is 3r, and 3 times 6, 3 times positive 6, which is positive 18. Then we move on to the other side. So we've got negative 7 times r and negative 7 times 6. Well, negative times a positive is a negative, so we'll have negative 7r. And negative 7 times positive 6 would be negative 42. All right, so far so good. All right, we're going to collect the like terms on uh, the respective sides of the Great Wall of China or the equal sign. So 3r, which is already on the left side, will be joined up with minus 7r because as it moves over, it becomes plus 7r. And then uh, on the right side, we have negative 42, who will join forces with 18, which moves across and becomes its opposite, or minus 18. And then when we combine 3r and 7r, we get 10r. And then negative 42 and minus 18 ends up being negative 60. Oh, that's looking pretty friendly. So we divide both sides by 10. And when we do that, we end up with an R value of negative 6. So there we go. R equals negative 6. All right, so today we're going to be talking about finding angle measurements. And we're actually going to be um, calculating or measuring angles in a variety of different ways. And so here's kind of an example of what those problems might look at. So let's, let's uh, keep moving along. So... There's an angle postulate that says this. And an angle postulate is just kind of like a little definition or a little rule. So it's what it says is if these two angles right here add up to 70 degrees, and we know that this angle right here adds up to 25 degrees, then in order to find the missing angle, all we have to do is subtract the, the partial angle from the total angle. So that means that x is going to equal 70 minus 25. And that's kind of the whole deal about angles is if you look at the situation, you're able to find out what you're looking for, and using the numbers they give you, you can find a, a, a roadmap or an approach to get there. So if we do 70, 70 minus 25, We'll grab a calculator just to make sure we get the right answer. So 70 subtract 25, and that's going to give us 45 degrees. Very nice. Okay, keep on a moving. Okay, an angle measure of 57, what is its measure of, or, or of its complement? Okay, if you remember, complements add up to 90 degrees. So 57 degrees plus some angle that has to be the complement of 57 equals 90. So we're basically going to subtract 57 from 90. So 57 from 90, what's that going to give us? So we've got 90 subtract 57. Well, lo and behold, then that angle or its complement of 57 is 33 degrees. Okay, uh, an angle measures 76 degrees. What is the measure of its supplement? Well, we remember from uh, our last discussion that any angle plus its supplement will total a grand total of 180 degrees. So if we subtract 76 from both sides, 180 minus 76 is going to give us 104 degrees. Now let's just be a little neater here. We know that this is a degree symbol, so i got to make sure I keep my marks accurate here so it doesn't look like a, an 1800 or something like that. 
and that's a 76 so we don't uh, we don't want that to look like a 70 so let's fix that up so it looks more like a 76 so 180 minus 76 is 104 degrees okay keep on moving in this figure now this is where we get into kind of some interesting new stuff so the measure of angle one is 3x the measure of angle two is x plus 32 degrees We've got to find the measure of the angles. So they don't specifically tell us the measure of the angles just yet. But they do tell us that measure of angle 1 is 3x. And the measure of angle 2 is just x plus 32. But something that we know from an earlier definition is that we have a straight line here. So this total angle right here also adds up to 180 degrees. So using that piece of information, we can write an equation for this whole process. So we've got uh, 3x plus x plus 32. Also, these two angles added together add up to a total of 180 degrees. So 3x plus x is 4x plus 32. And all of that equals 180. Oh, we got a little bit careless there, so that's a 180, not a 186. Okay. All right, now all we have to do is subtract 32 from both sides, minus 32. So let's get our calculator out there again. 180 minus 32 equals 148 degrees. And all of that equals 4x. Now you notice we're solving this problem by solving an equation, something that we learned how to do a long time ago. So if we divide both sides by 4 to get x by itself, we end up with 148 divided by x, or divided by 4. So let's keep our calculator going. So 148 divided by 4, that equals 37. So we know that x is 37. Now the question is, do we know our angle yet? We don't know the measure of angle 1 or 2 yet. We still have to take the 37 back up and multiply it by 3 in the first instance. So 3 times 37. And in the second instance, we have to add 37 to 32. And by doing this, we'll get both of our measures. So 37 plus 32, that comes out to be... 69 degrees, and then 3 times 37, well, 3 times 37 is a nice number. 3 times 37 equals 111 degrees. And if you take a double check on that, you'll notice that those two add up to 180 degrees. So is this a lot of work? Yeah, quite a bit of work there, but we can handle it. Okay, in this figure, these two angles are going to add up to 90, and they give us a couple of x value expressions to, to tell us what angle 1 and angle 2 are. So we're going to have to go to work, and we're going to have to write an equation with 3x plus x plus 14, totaling a total of 90 degrees. And we know that because it says right here that angle 1 and 2 form this right angle, which is a 90 degree angle. Okay, let's get uh, going on this then. So we've got x and 3x, we're gonna combine together to give us 4x. And 4x plus 14 equals 90. So we're gonna subtract 14 from both sides. And 90 minus 14, 80, so that's going to give us 76. And all of that's going to be equal to 4x. So let's finish this off, at least finding x part of it, by dividing by 4. So with our handy-dandy calculator, we do 76 divided by 4, and that equals 19. So in this case, x equals... 19 degrees. 
Well, we're not quite done yet because we know that measure of angle one up here is 3x. So we're going to have 3 times 19 in order to find out what that equals. And 3 times 19, well, it's 3 times 10 is 30. 3 times 9 is 27. So that's going to equal 57 degrees. Now, at this point, we could actually just subtract this number from 90 to find angle 2. Or we can come down here and say, okay, x is 19. So 19 plus 14 will give us our angle measure as well. So that's 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. So a 33 degrees. So that's our two angles, 57 and 33 degrees. Okay, so to do this problem, we know that this angle is 2x, and this angle is x plus 84. So we write down here in our equation 2x plus x plus 84 equals 180. And then we go ahead and simplify it over here. This is what you can type in here because you're just trying to put this together. Or you can simplify it and put in 3x plus 84 equals 180. All right, so when you subtract 84 from both sides, and use your calculator to help with the calculation, uh, 180 subtract 84 equals 96. So we get 3x equals 96. Then we divide both sides by 3. And that's an easy calculation. So x ends up being 32. All right, so we know that uh, the measure of angle 1 is 2x's. So... 2 times 32 equals 64. So this is a 64 degree angle. And then the next one is x plus 84. So if we do 32 plus 84, so 32 plus 84 to get our next angle, and using our calculator, 32 plus 84. We end up with a 116 degree angle for the second one. And we know that those two angles add up to 180 degrees. All right, keep it going. Okay, so here's another diagram. And we notice that we've got uh, one of those intersections with two angles on either side of the intersection. So we happen to know that when angles are straight across from an intersection like that, that they equal each other. So that means that we're going to have 5x plus 69 equals 109. Okay, so in order to find x, that's what we got to solve. And that's 5x plus 69. I got kind of messed up the plus sign there. Let's fix that before we get too confusing looking. So 5x, we have our markers again, 5x plus 69. So when you do these, make sure you're writing them really nicely. So you're going to subtract 69 from both sides. And that's going to leave you with a nice total of 40 for 5x. So 5x equals 40. Now when you divide both sides by 5, you end up with a value of x equals uh, 40 divided by 5 is 8. So x equals 8. Now it asks for what's the value of z? Well we notice that we have this straight line relationship here between 109 and z. So we know those two are going to add up to 180. So z is going to equal 180 subtract 109 degrees. 
And that's going to give us a nice total of 71 degrees. So there we go. So kind of an interesting relationship. And we're starting to, to put more than one idea together here. So we need to know a little bit uh, about a couple of different things in order to solve these problems. Okay, on this particular one, we better move that out of the way so we know what it's asking. It says, find the values of X and Z. Well, it's really nice that in, in the case of uh, this one, we know that the angle straight across from 97, which is Z, is equal to 97. So right off the bat, we know this is a 97 degree angle based on our understanding of vertical angles. Okay, so if that's a 97 degree angle, now we also know that this 97 degree angle combined with this angle down here equals 180 degrees. So we'll have the relationship 12x minus 85 plus 90 will equal 180. All right, so let's do a little rearranging, kind of like we did with our Great Wall of China, and maybe we'll do a little bit of a jump here. So we know that 12x over here is going to equal 180, subtract 90, because we moved it over, and this minus 85 will become plus 85. Plus 85. All right, so we've got to combine these three numbers and then divide by 12. So let's combine them. Let's grab our calculator. We end up with 180 minus 90 plus 85. So we get a total of 175. Okay, maybe we better double check that. That number sounds a little bit strange. Oh, I can see why, because that 90 should be a 97. All right, so we made a little mistake. So if you make a mistake, you got to go back in there and fix your mistakes. So that's going to be a 97, which means that over here we're going to make this a 97. So let's hurry and put that in there. Because it's taken a long time to, to do these problems, huh? 97. Okay, so 180 minus 97 plus 85. Now, I, I was starting to look at where the numbers were going when we got done, and I noticed that they weren't working right. So that's why I, I had to double check that number. So minus 97 plus 85 equals 168. That's a better looking number. So 168, and then we're going to divide that by 12. And we're going to have an of x value of 168 divided by 12. So 168 divided by 12 equals 14. So x equals 14. And the nice thing about this particular problem is they just want to know what x is. We don't have to calculate anything else here. So we're good to go on that problem. Okay, so there you go. You got kind of some interesting looking problems that might take you a little while to get them done today. We're here to help you, or you can rewatch the video. So good luck and thank you very much.